Takeoff was from the Naval Air Station at Anacostia in Washington, D.C. on a clear and peaceful morning. We were flying a Navy Neptune P-2B anti-sub patrol bomber on our way across the Atlantic. It felt good to get out in the clean, open, free air, because up there you get a kind of good feeling. You're able to do a little something extra for your country in peacetime and have some fun doing it. Below us, a new continent, Africa and a new adventure. And we were among old friends, almost the same crew back again. It was good to get back in the Navy. We had come halfway around the world to an obscure airstrip in North Africa. Right off, we had a bit of excitement just as we touched down. Watch that left tire on the landing run. was our explosive welcome to the biggest little airport in Africa. But everybody relaxed again in a few minutes when we got our official welcome. It had been a pretty long haul for us part-time sailors, and we were kind of pushed. But it was a satisfying kind of being tired. We were among buddies doing something useful, from civilian life back in the States yesterday to Navy life in North Africa today. That's the exciting career in the United States Navy. Either regular or reserve. Travel, friends, something happening all the time. Heading for quarters to settle down, we knew that we'd sleep tonight. That was for sure. But the following morning found us up and at them, busy at the airplane, shaping it up for maneuvers. Three of my buddies, weekend warriors like myself, are working for Uncle Sam before we take a little time off for ourselves. On one wing of the Neptune, lover boy McBride checks out the radar and our searchlights. Making sure the P2V's firing power, its bombs and rockets and machine guns, is our chief interpreter and chief bargaining agent, Schaefer. And there's Chris. He's our gourmet. He works up an appetite with one of the plane's twin engines. It'll be through their eyes that we will see many of the fabulous sights of this old world. Later in the day, we set out for Rabat, the half-modern, half-ancient city just south of legendary Casablanca. One of the first things that impressed us was the huge arch that led to the present Sultan's fortress in Rabat. Well, they say that American sailors are the world's greatest tourists, and believe me, we toured the modern section of the city. Apartment stores, the one western church, and apartment buildings, hotels, utility buildings, office structures, government quarters, and military headquarters. And one thing that amazed us was the city's clean, wide streets and boulevards. As Chris said, look at all the foreign cars. How did they get here? At the modern railroad station, we got our first hint of an older order. And we entered a timeless, often incongruous, walled city within a city. The Medina, the native quarter. The 
first thing we discovered in the Medina was that there was plenty of two-wheeled transportation available. But we decided to walk through anyway. And right smack in the middle of nowhere, we saw a sign of home. As we continued on, we noticed the streets were all cobblestone, very narrow and winding. The native dress was part Western, part Eastern. Some men wearing suits, and others wearing long gowns. The women, of course, wore veils. This, we found out, was a custom that was centuries old. As we stopped to haggle for souvenirs, we saw that no matter where in the world you are, kids are all pretty much alike. Kids and crowd, all watching while the camera grinds away. You know, it looked just like Main Street, USA, during a rush hour. Where East meets West. Where Young meets Old. And where greetings mean the same in any language. Walking on, we started thinking about a movie. And just like downtown, we found one. Even if we couldn't understand all the words, we did recognize the stars. Having seen the picture on the Late Late Show back home, we kept right on going. It was real pleasant walking through an area like this, so many thousands of miles from home, on a sunny day, just watching the natives going about their business. We were completely relaxed, having an ice cream cone, shopping, or just looking, just passing the time away doing nothing. Up ahead, we noticed a crowd had begun to gather. It was approaching the traditional prayer hour. We didn't know it, but we were in for a rare opportunity, watching the Sultan himself with his entire procession on the way to his private mosque. And of course, we got some wonderful shots of all of this. The Sultan in his fine royal carriage, some of his royal palace guard on horseback, and many of the loyal subjects lining the way. We thought this was kind of cute. The Sultan's own pretty little daughter in her own pony cart. The crowd by this time was getting pretty enthusiastic. The excitement was at a fever pitch. Notice this woman in the foreground, almost like a college cheerleader. As the prayers came to an end, the Sultan presented himself to his people astride his own stallion. And the Sultana got a ride home in the royal coach.
certainly was an impressive and colorful sight. And all of us felt lucky to get it on film as a memorable part of our travels. Or as the Navy says, join up and see the world. We noticed quite a few tourists like ourselves here in Morocco, mostly American servicemen, with all the branches represented and, of course, all with cameras. The festivities, it seemed, weren't over yet. Anywhere in the world, everybody loves the parade. This was no exception. We followed the procession along with everybody else because nobody can resist a stirring marching band. But what really got us was the march that this native outfit was playing. Listen. And as the palace guard marches off, see if you can watch the leader of the band waving his big sword. This is really a cutoff. Closing out a great day, the native drum corps kept a steady rhythm going at the flag ceremony. We reloaded our cameras and caught this authentic background of the fine pageantry. Truly a different kind of tourist travel. Next morning, bright and early, the Navy put us back to work. We were heading for the sixth fleet maneuvers in the Mediterranean. We were firing rockets. And those targets represent enemy submarines. The skipper's aim was as good as ever. Mission completed. The well done from the skipper. Now off to Italy the historic city of the Seven Hills. After a quick check with customs at the airport, we hired a taxi and drove into Rome, where the first place we stopped was at the ancient ruins of the Colosseum. We broke out the cameras and proceeded to have another field day.
Later on in Rome, we were to have an adventure, which all came about because first, Chris, as usual, got hungry. And second, lover boy McBride decided that he just had to meet one of the city's more beautiful sights. And third, chief bargaining agent Schaefer wanted to brush up on his specialty. But for now, we were just plain Navy reservists on a thrilling holiday in Rome. Just outside the Colosseum, we saw the massive triumphal arch. Then we moved down the boulevard to the monument of King Victor Emmanuel. Of course, we dropped a few coins in the Trevi Fountain, just to say we did. And at the ancient St. Michael's Castle, we stopped for some more pictures. We got some fine shots of St. Peter's and the Basilica in the Vatican City, including this breathtaker. And here at the Spanish Steps, we began looking around for a restaurant because Christ was getting hungry. Below, we saw a busy boulevard, so we started down. The circumstances of our big adventure in Rome were commencing to form. And when lover boy McBride saw what every man with eyes sees since time began, things were beginning to take shape. But old man Schaefer couldn't resist a bargaining session which only postponed the inevitable. What have you got? Uh, I like it. Uh, real How much? Yes, it's five dollars each. Five dollars each? No. 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 Right. What do you want? $10.53, all right? No, no $10. Five. Five. Give me seven, all right? Uh, five. All right, give me $5, all right. Go. All right. Two and three. I'm still hungry. I'm going to find, find some pizza. Uh, I think there's a grown-up in the Coming? All right. I'll see you. Just a moment. Come on, you guys. The adventure officially started with this earth-shaking Academy Award-winning McBride special. Didn't you forget something back there? Hey! Hey! Yep, it was the hat. But the Navy comes through with flying colors after all, with everything all present and accounted for. How do you feel, Mac? Oh, I feel much better. That's good. See, Emilio? Yeah, That's much better, better, much better. In the juice fly, finito. I guess so. My name is Hank. What is your Hank. name? Hank. Um, Luciana. 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 This is Mac. 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 And here? This is Chris. Hi, Chris. Well, and, um, uh, quanto tempo sta per qui in Italia? No capish. Italiana. Can you speak? No. Can you speak in English? A little no, English? Piccolo, piccolo, piccolo. Oh, just a little. Just a little. Yes. And uh, speak French? No. Okay. How French. about some uh, Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola. Here in Italy? Hey, good for 
for a taste of creeper knowledge. Where? Huh? Where? There's coffee. You see coffee? Hey, stop. Uh, cocchiere, ferme, per favore. Hey, wait a minute. That voice sounds familiar. There's only one voice in the world like that. It's that famous world traveler gourmet, bon vivant, and cosmopolite, Jerry Colonna. Now, you forgot I'm also a babysitter for mother. Now, Jerry, how can you babysit with a mother? Same principle, but more fun. Well, Jerry, I imagine you know more about this part of the world than I do. Suppose you take over and tell us what's happening. Gladly, gladly. Now, you'll notice by the sign, the name of the restaurant is Trattorio Mastro di Vano, which translated means no use hiding it in your shoe, sailor. We'll find it. Waiter, waiter, bring a menu. Whoops, too late. She's already ordered. The girl has a hobby. She's a glutton. Now she's acting as interpreter for them. McBride wants spaghetti and matzo balls. Schaefer's is mad because they don't have corn pone and chitlins. And Chris wants something dainty like pig's feet over the rock. Well, well, here's the waiter back again, and this seems like a good time to tell you about the fine beverages in Italy. They're always made by farmers stamping on grapes with their bare feet. This is fine, but they're sometimes hard to pour if a toe is left in the bottle. If you listen closely, you may hear those bells ringing in the background. That's a signal to the townsfolk, but not for what you think. This is to let them know that Anna Magnani is taking a sunbath on the roof. little doll walking in the background. She looks like Monroe. Not Madeline, but Vaughn. Ah, here's the waiter with the spaghetti. Ah, my cousin Teresa, she loved to make a spaghetti. She got a great recipe. She take a half a pound of spaghetti and 10 pounds of garlic. Pour the half a pound of spaghetti and the 10 pounds of garlic in a pot and cook. Only trouble is, nobody ever know how it turns out. You can't get close enough to serve it. Ah, now there's a bunch of real chow hounds. Get a look at that table. Did you ever see anything like that? The food's all gone. They would have eaten the plates too, but they're a la carte. Uh-oh, here comes the waiter with the check. He's happy now, but wait till he finds out his tip is going to be three green stamps and an Elvis for Ansley Button. Well, there they go now, and as the bicarbonate slowly sinks into the west, this is your guy, Jerry Colonna, saying, Arrivederci, oh, Marie, oh, Marie, go on the sun, Thank you, Jerry Colonna. This part of the sightseeing tour seemed much more enjoyable to them for some reason or other, possibly because they couldn't have hired a lovelier guy. As our Roman holiday was coming to a close, we decided to escort Lucy home. Fortunately, though, on the way, one of the city's finest historic landmarks loomed into view. And we talked Lucy into one last visit. It was the old Roman Forum, whose history dates back to six centuries before Christ. Also in the pre-Christian era, it played an important part in the affairs of Julius Caesar. Here, private and public affairs were discussed, ceremonies and assemblies held, orations delivered, Edicts announced and justice administered. Chris thought it was just a big mess. He thought they ought to fix it up or make a bowling alley out of it. But it was getting late. We had to get Lucy home. And 
we had to get back ourselves. It's been a wonderful afternoon. We hated saying goodbye to Rome and to our guide. A couple of traditional kisses for us and a souvenir for the lovely lady. We were ready to take our leave. We couldn't understand much of the language and Lucy had her troubles with ours too. But we'd had fun. We had lots of laughs. The adventure was at an end now. It was all summed up best in the warmest of Italian farewells. Arrivederci. We'll miss you too, Lucy, and all the sights and the attractions of the city of the Seven Hills.